Hi, this is Kata Magoosh, and a lot of students have been asking me questions about how they can best prepare for these upcoming MCATs. So we're looking at shorter MCATs, um, shorter breaks, tests are given three times a day, uh, different social distancing measures in place. And what I've done is I've, I've kind of looked through what I've received and uh, narrowed in on five questions that seem to be core concerns students have, and I'm gonna share my thoughts with you on those, kind of Q&A style. So the first question is, how can I practice studying within the new time frame? I recommend doing your practice tests and actually altering them to fit the shorter time frame and fewer questions. And below this, I've linked a, a document that actually that lays that out. And of course, probably a lot of you have it as well. Um, it's on the AAMC website. But you're looking at, um, let's see, 11 fewer questions in the science sections and five fewer cars sections. And the time has been reduced down to 76 minutes for science and 81 for cars. And you're going to have 10 minute breaks between each of the major sections. So implement that basically. And one thing we've done at Magoosh is actually created an exam you can take for free. So it's an online exam. It's based, comes from our pool of Magoosh questions. Um, so the questions are already pre-validated and you can just sign up. It's in the link and you'll be able to practice with the time and questions set up just the way it'll be to our best guesses because none of us yet know how many passages versus discrete questions will appear on the science sections. Um, but definitely do that and then for other tests like maybe you've been saving your AAMC full length a couple of those for the end I would just <clears throat> I would just go through the first Set of questions, right? So instead of 59 just end at 48 and yes that might land you in the middle of a passage um, But because we can't replicate we can't for sure know which discrete to go towards and which ones to cut out I think just going 1 to 48 is, is the best way to go. And question number two is, um, what should I do about pacing? I was practicing pacing with discrete questions first and then answering the rest of the questions based on passage. Is this still going to work with the shortened time exams? Um, <clears throat> so we don't know for sure, but I'm guessing that most of you who have followed an, a technique similar to, to this, it's, it looks like this, right? So um, in, the, in the science sections, you answer the discrete questions, you aim for one minute per discrete question, and then for each passage, you spend on the science sections around eight minutes a passage, a little more, a little less. And then for cars, usually around 10 minutes a passage, a little more, a little less, depending on how many prompts there are. All, I, I think that that most likely will work on this new exam. So I've done the math and I've sort of looked at, you know, what if it's all, what if they take out all the discrete or what if all the discrete are in there? And uh, what if they just have tons of passages with four prompts, you know, and I, I've looked at it a couple different ways. And I think that the standard pacing instructions by and large will work. So uh, what I've done is I, I created a resource linked below where I've laid that out for you. So what I recommend aiming for per passage on this new exam. But I also broke it down based on what time you want it to be when you get to a certain question in the set. Because as I was looking at it, I realized you know, it's kind of nice. All four sections are 48 questions. That's really divisible by four. The time frame is just about 80 minutes across exams. It's a little less, but you can, you can pretty much break it into quadrants and really quickly be able to eyeball when I'm at question 12, 24, 36, how many minutes should be left. And you can, so you can look at that too and, and choose a pacing strategy that seems to suit you better. Question three. If my test gets canceled again, how will I be notified? Do you think they will cancel tests at the last minute? 
I don't think there are going to be widespread test closures anytime soon for the MCAT. There could be, but I would be somewhat surprised. I think the MCAT is really tr working under the assumption that they're going to happen through the summer. And even if some centers can't go through, and we already know some centers aren't open in May and early June, um, they're still going to be running the tests. Now at a specific center, what's supposed to happen is if they cancel, they email you. And by and large, that's what happened when people's exams got canceled uh, over this past spring, but there were students who didn't get cancellation emails or, or yeah, whether they um, were never sent or they never received them for whatever reason. I, I've heard this from more than one student. And so I recommend just logging in and checking once a week between now and, and test day. And then of course, maybe once a day, the three days leading up to test day, just to be sure, just to make sure that you still have that spot. <clears throat> In terms of do, will, will they cancel at the last minute, I doubt it. I think that if they start to see signs, at least based on COVID, I mean, of course, there could be another, something else could happen that would cause them to cancel potentially. But um, speaking of just the, the concerns that have brought us all to this place, I think that most of the tests, most of the standardized tests, and I've been following not just the MCAT, um, are, are aiming for not canceling anything within three weeks of test date. So I can't guarantee you that's what's gonna happen, but I think if they have reason to believe at a center that something might get closed, I think they'll, they'll close. Not the week before, but weeks before. Let's hope. Uh, question number four. Should I take a practice test wearing masks and gloves? Pearson has recently announced that everybody taking the MCAT, for the time being anyway, will need to bring and wear a mask and they won't be allowed into the testing center without a mask. And so yes, I definitely recommend that you start practicing with a mask on. And I personally don't like the N95s for anything that, <laughs> they're, they're hard to breathe in, right? They're, they're high quality when it comes to filtration, but um, I would choose something comfortable, something that's not going to slip, something where the elastic's not too strong, and uh, start by just practicing when you're doing your regular studies, not on practice tests right away. And do make sure that you take at least one full length practice test with your mask on the entire time. But like I said, before you do that, start with just smaller doses of studying with your mask, because that'll help you at least choose what is the most comfortable for you to wear in that kind of, for so long. Uh, in terms of gloves, so gloves are not required and they're not even recommended um, by most. They are allowed, they're permitted. Uh, some people um, feel better with, with gloves, maybe people who are um, immunocompromised. Um, you know, there's a lot of conflicting reports on, on whether or not gloves are, um, are helpful with COVID. So I, I recommend you do your own research. What I will say is that most of the pros and cons about this whole glove conversation is about um, people both like them and dislike them for the fact that they change behaviors more than anything. So they can be helpful because they can remind people to be careful. They can remind people not to touch their face. They can. Um, they just kind of put an extra barrier there. But in terms of just providing a barrier from the actual ambient environment, from surfaces and so forth, um, it's, not, uh, it's, uh, it's not worth the hassle there, I don't think. So washing hands, very important. They will provide hand sanitizer. Um, gloves, wear them if it's going to make you comfortable. And if you aren't sure, you know, research and come to your own conclusion about what is going to be best for you. And uh, last question, my test is at 6 p.m. and I'm not focused at night. How can I prepare to take the exam so late? Well, you do want to take the practice exam at least once at that time, ideally. If you can't get it exact, you know, try and get close. And then in terms of just trying to make sure that you're either waking up early enough or staying up late enough to reset your sleep cycle, if you're somebody who adjusts easily, do it, you know, and, and if you don't have competing demands on your time that necessitate otherwise, then 
yeah, switch your schedule by three hours forward or back. You know, it's, it'll, it'll make it easier on test day. It'll make you think more clearly. But if you aren't somebody who adjusts easily, do not sacrifice sleep day after day after day in the name of trying to get onto a new system, a new schedule. I think what you'll find is that if you can just twice, maybe three times a week, you can wake up at 4 a.m. or you can stay up until, you know, active until midnight, um, focusing. Um, if you can do that a couple times a week, that's gonna make a big difference. It really will. It'll have carryover value. You don't have to do it every single day. Every, every single day is nice because it puts you in a nice routine. It's better, but um, you know, don't sacrifice sleep just because you're really trying to wake up at 4 a.m. every single day. Um, do it two or three times a week and definitely try and take the test at least once at that time. Okay, so let us know. What do you have questions about? Um, are there any tips or strategies that are working for you right now? I look forward to hearing back from you and I wish you all the best in this next stage of studying. Take good care.